Ooh, ooh. Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to Play It Painted Live. Welcome to one of the latest starts we've ever had in the history of this show. Only an hour and three minutes late getting up and going. Hey, guys, a new record. Let's all be proud. <laughs> yes, we are late tonight, folks, and I am sorry. I do apologize for uh, the late start. Uh, you know, summer is almost over. And uh, it's kind of thrown a monkey wrench in pretty much all the plans I've made. Uh, summer has been, I, I'm, I'm calling this summer the summer of snail. Um, it's just been a very chaotic uh, summer. Um, it, it, frankly, it's been underwhelming. Uh, and there's a few reasons for that. You know, personal, uh, some personal, some other. Um, wait a minute, what am I talking about? They're all, they're all kind of personal. Uh, but yeah, so... Uh, anyway, I'm in the middle of going something off camera right now, and I need to do that before I continue here. Uh, so this program is going to be rather botched together. Uh, so it, it <laughs> I can apologize for that too, but uh, you know that's just that's just the nature of the beast tonight. That's kind of a a recurring theme once again, calling it the summer of snout. Now, for those of you who don't know, I tend to use the term snout uh, to indicate kind of the leftover bits. You know, Dave Chappelle used a joke about you know, using the snout of the pig, using whatever you have left over to kind of make do. Uh, that's how I feel about this summer. It's just a bunch of leftover bits of, of once good stuff um, that uh, unfortunately is not quite as cool as it might seem. So... Uh, anyway, something's uh, glue is drying on the miniature. I hope to at least start painting tonight. Um, but uh, in the meantime, I'm gonna get you guys caught up on the uh, the war band here that I've been building for Saugus. So this is the Crusader war band here, kind of sliding past your screen. Um, I was building these uh, uh, the other week, and you can see I did. Uh, I did some priming. I did some zenithal priming, and then I did uh, I did the only I only blocked out one color on each of these miniatures. Now the one color is made up of actually several colors, but it's the the one color to block out. It's one of the common colors amongst all models in this warband. So let me kind of zoom around here. There we go. Give you guys a little bit something better here to look at. So. Here's one of the models, for example, and you can see there's a kind of a lighting gradient here on the shield. It's because I'm going with a, a warm, uh, I'm kind of going with a, a warm off-white uh, as part of the scheme. Uh, the other color is is going to be a like a blue color. Well, I'm not 100% sure on that. I mean, this is this white here, just so you know, is kind of that um, same color that they, they tend to use on a lot of the Crusader um color schemes like for example um templars you know uh, uh templar models will have that red cross over kind of an off-white there and then you'll have um uh you may use uh, purple as the offset color that's a common one red is a common one even some blue i think i'm gonna go blue or black i'm gonna go blue probably as the offset here but here's here's where i'm at with these miniatures and uh, there's quite a few of them. But the reason why I, I blocked out the white instead of, um, say, the blue is because that's just kind of the, the easier way to do this. If you're uh, blocking out with an airbrush, you should block out. My, my general approach is to block out the, the lightest color in your color scheme um, because it's harder to go the other way. In other words, if I had blocked out the blue on these models, uh, if I were to come back in with... The whites and try to you know shade and highlight the whites um i'd have a difficult time uh first of all covering the blue and then transitioning gets a little ugly whereas with a blue you know there's a lot of uh ways i can i can work a blue into the color scheme i can uh, uh i can start off with the dark blue and just highlight my way up i can start off with a, a light blue shade it re-highlight it um, and they're, they're, those blues will all pretty much cover pretty well over this uh, off-white. 
So that's where they are. I'm not going to do any work on these guys tonight because it would be super boring for you guys to watch. Uh, the next step on them actually isn't the isn't to do the blue. It's actually to do all the uh, skin and faces, and that's pretty tedious work. So, uh, you know, that's that's a lot of sitting down, painting in a bunch of eyeballs, and then painting in a bunch of uh, a bunch of flesh here. Getting some messages here. Let me find out what those are. Okay. That has nothing to do with the feed, but that's okay. Uh, I'm just going to keep going. And uh, it might be a short feed tonight, guys, mainly because I had to start an hour late. Um, I really don't know what to do at this point. I mean, uh, hopefully the summer's ending pretty soon. That might mean that my, my wife and son are forced to uh, adopt a more regular and predictable pattern of being awake or not I, I think it will it might take a couple of weeks after school has begun to get them back on some sort of a regular schedule unfortunately for me i have to work five days a week all year long so i'm always uh, on this schedule so anyway i'm going to get these models off the painting field here and I'm going to show you what I'm going to work on tonight. Uh, it's going to be this model here. This is the, there you go. This is the Twilight Knight, the limited edition Twilight Knight uh, promo figure for Wrath of Kings. I did put her on a different base because I want to do something a little fancier with her. So let's get started on this miniature. Uh, and I do have to do just a little bit of airbrushing, but this should go pretty quick. I'm going to kick on the compressor here. It's actually kind of good since uh, nobody is on right now. Uh, nobody's watching live right now, so it's fine. Uh, so yeah, it's guys. It this summer has been summer snout. Um, it hasn't been like a tragic summer for me. It's just been kind of a disappointment. Uh, you know, there's been a number of uh, renovations that had to occur uh, in our home, and as part of that. Oh, shoot. I have to think. I kind of want a shield. On this. Actually, I'm going to paint her without the shield. I'm going to paint her without the shield. I'll worry about the shield later. Um, so, yeah. Uh, it, the renovations in the home really wasn't something that I had planned. Uh, and I don't think my wife has, has planned is, is taking over the entirety of her uh, summer vacation. But you know there were there were a lot a number of errors that happened there. There's, um, you know, there's uh, input that's being heard, input that's not being heard. Uh, it's a hole to do uh, that kind of thing, and it, it you know I, I don't really want to get into it on air, but it's it it really has kind of crushed uh, all of our plans for this summer, and then that and kind of Comic Con being a uh, a little bit of a disappointment this year mainly because we were moved away from the main convention center. Uh, so yeah, it's been a little bit of a bummer, guys. I, uh, I'm not gonna, not gonna sugarcoat that anymore. Um, and, uh, but, but that said, you know, I, I really can't complain too much. I mean, hey, we've got our health, we've got our happiness. My son is doing well. I can't really complain all that much. So I am gonna prep my airbrush here for a little bit of uh, a little bit of work. Let me just uh, make sure this is running well. I have a. I'm working with two airbrushes right now at the moment. One has a 0.3 in it. That's the one that I'm working with right now, cleaning the needle out. And the other one, uh, I set a 0.2 in it. I can do fancy or uh, fancier work with it so so the nice thing about that setup is I can swap airbrushes and go from you know regular to fine detail so I'm gonna use the airbrush just for a few effects here but uh, hopefully it won't be too long because I kind of have to get cooking on this model if I'm gonna get through any progress tonight I 
I'm, I'm going to warn you right now, I don't think I will be finishing this model unless we decide to go overtime and, and we go a little later into the night, uh, which is I'm, I'm, it's not something I'm opposed to doing. It's just uh, we'll see if I if I peter out before then. All right. So quick disconnect. Pop this airbrush in. There we go. And let me turn up the pressure just a hair. As we are priming, I'm gonna prime with this uh, Vallejo gray primer. And we're gonna do how I normally do this is a couple of, do a thin layer, then the layer to kind of even it out. And then, uh, then I'm gonna start applying shades. Okay, so just a little bit of gray. You get the ball rolling here. Uh, if you are tuning in right now, welcome to Play It Painted Live. Let us know what you're painting or what you should be painting. Again, this is the limited edition Twilight Night from Wrath of King. And I am already fairly impressed with this miniature. Uh, that right there, uh, it's not so great. See that? Ugh, don't like that line there. I'm going to have to do something like that. Let's pause for a minute here. Let me let me see what I can do about that really fast. If I can get it to kind of smooth out here. Yeah, I was worried about that. That didn't, uh, that transition. I, I didn't like that it's cut right there in the middle of the, basically the middle of that tabard. But uh, I don't have much of a choice here. I'm going to put on a little, little bit of plastic putty just so that you don't have a visible crack there. Okay. There we go. So I'm just going to, this is, this is really good stuff. This Vallejo plastic putty, like miles better than uh, liquid green stuff. For you GW guys, liquid green stuff is just horrible. I've had pretty bad experiences with it. It does shrink. So be aware of that. This plastic putty stuff does shrink a little bit too, but uh, it's it's not on the same order of bad that uh, the GW liquid green stuff is. Prime the base here. So far, so good. And we can do a little bit more primer on there. Smooth out what I've done. Pretty good. Okay, good. Now I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. And then we're gonna let that dry for just a minute. Then we'll move over here pretty quickly over to the uh, to the shading. Just need a little more. A little more alcohol here to clean out. But yeah, I've been looking forward to painting this miniature for a while. I couldn't, I'll be honest with you guys, I couldn't decide what I wanted to paint before uh, before I turned on the camera. This was the model that happened to be out. <laughs> and I was like, hey, I want to paint that. So I figured, why not tonight, huh? Why not tonight? Let's go ahead and take care of it tonight and go from there okay so we're just gonna pause for a moment here I'm gonna take a little sip once again welcome to play it painted live let's know what you're painting what you should be painting we are just about to start 
this Twilight Night for Rapid Kings. And I'm eating an Oreo cookie. Hold on one moment. Cookie break. All right. So let's give this model a little shadow. Let's start with our black again. So black, gray, and then we're going to do... I'm actually going to show you a little bit of the Templar screen, uh, not the Templar, the Crusader color scheme as a consequence of this model scheme. So they're going to be very similar. Um, I already have a Twilight Night that's kind of painted to the studio art from the El Dorado collection. And even the uh, SCE one is also very similar. Just get a, I'm just running a little bit of air over the model right now. Help that primer dry. And here we go. Okay, here comes the black. Coming in as a shade over the model. I may actually do the base uh, just like I do the arena. You know the regular arena right stuff, where I uh, where I use a, a sponging technique, and then I'll I'll use a uh, a gloss over it to make it look like she's standing on marble. Let me do that just because she's so cool looking. go ink is down I mean the main purpose of this ink wash is to get in the shaded shaded areas there we go looking pretty good all right clean this out real quick you know inks are nice because it's a nice quick change out but I'm gonna go right back to some gray so we're going to go back to gray. We're just going to keep rocking it on this model. Okay. And I think I am going to go back to the, uh, the gray primer. Because, you know, I can go to a... I can go to a... Uh, a Minotaur gray or a model... A Vallejo model air gray, but this gray is going to be just fine. This gray from the primer, as long as it doesn't powder up on me, should be okay. And I don't need, I don't need to do too much of it, honestly. So here we go, Zenithal Prime. I'm gonna back us up here so you guys can see a little more macro version of what's going on. So Vallejo's gray is pretty white, such that if you spray it in place like that, you can see it almost looks like white primer. So you can get you can get some decent like lighting effects out of it, just like that. I'll show you on this side. Just let it build a little bit. See. You can, do, you can do all your your pre-shading and pre-highlighting. And you can actually come through and kind of like 
few little points of light on the model. See how the, the black ink really just kind of gave me a little bit of shadow. Nothing, nothing too serious here. Pretty cool. So I think this tabard is going to be uh, kind of that same off-white color that I'm doing on the on the warband. Okay, so far so good. go. We got grayscale version of the mini. There you go. See? You got a little lighting there on the blade. That's exactly what we want. Okay, cool. Clean this out, and then we're going to move over to the next color. So we're going to start to work on the kind of the off-white colors of uh, the scheme. So I'm going to start with uh, kind of a beige color, and then work my way towards a bone color. And while I'm thinking about it... I'll probably do, yeah, on the armor and the non-metallics, I'll do kind of a steel color. So we're going to do ancient bone, snow white, and I need something a little bit darker than ancient bone. Maybe mummy. Maybe even like desolated beach. That might be. That's not too bad. M probably mummy. You can find mummy. Rugged skin is too dark. Uh, if I can't find mummy, it's going to be... I'll go back to Model Air and use uh, their medium brown. I hope it shouldn't... It shouldn't have to come to that, though. I really like the... Minotaur does does that earthy range a bit better than uh, Alejo does. So I try to stick with their earthy range, and then for Vallejo, their their blues and their greens are better. What's this? Crack soil. This is actually this will work. Yeah, this will work better than... Alright, so I'm going to go with this cracked soil. And I really don't need a whole... I don't, I don't need much of this. First, though, let me just make sure I don't have any clogs in my... in my airbrush. If you're just joining us, welcome to Play It Painted Live. Let us know what you're painting, what you should be painting. It'll be a quiet night tonight. Looks like I think the people that normally tune in kind of checked around to see if I was going to be on. And since I started so late, they're probably not going to show. But again, sorry, guys. <laughs> sorry, I really am. All right. Okay. Let's get moving here. 
Actually, you know what? I may, well, we will do okay. So. I need to turn this down just a little bit. There's mummy, by the way. I found it. But that's okay. This will work just as well. Again, just going for the cloak here. Cloak and maybe some of this work in between. Okay. Uh, looks pretty good. Yeah, she kind of has this. She kind of has that like Templar style color to her. Let's get that going. So you, just so you can see where I'm working here. And it's actually a pretty good skin base color even, so I don't even mind if I'm over a little bit. There we go. Because it doesn't really harm, it's not really going to harm the skin on the model. Okay. There we go. Now let's, uh, now let's kick it up. We're going to, we're going to go with the ancient bone. And then we're just going to highlight with, uh, with Snow White at the very, just at the tips. Once that's done, and we do a little bit of the non-metallic metals, the model is basically caught up to where the uh, Templars are. And then we just paint in the blue. And, yep. Uh-oh. Where is it? What's the thing? The big what? Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to have to pause here uh, get rid of a, a Katie did. Uh, I am sorry, guys, about this. So, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. If you're watching this on, on a recording, um, you might want to fast forward a couple of minutes. Okay, so be right back. Again, I really apologize. It's just not our night to do the live stream. It's just really bad. So, okay, here we go. Okay, anyways, we'll let that we'll let that dry. I'll be right back again. I apologize. Let's get back to it. All right. Had to get rid of a Katie did. Flew into the house and kind of scaring my wife and annoying the cats. A Katie did I call the Carl Weathers of nature shows. If you watch a Katie did on a nature show, it will usually die. It's usually there to feed some other more interesting creature. But I went ahead and disposed of the Katie did. 
get outside peacefully. Not to, did not do, no Katie Dids were harmed in the filming of tonight's live stream. Okay, so now I'm coming in with the bone white. And the idea here, just like any other highlight, is I'm trying to highlight the model without losing without losing all of the uh, the under color that rugged skin or whatever it is. Out what color that was, but this this bone white is really the base color. This is going to be this is most of the model. Is this bone white? Okay. Okay. Not bad. Okay. So now uh, the only thing left to do. Hold on. Let me give it another. Let me give it another layer. Okay. So now. Another thing left to do is to hit it with the Snow White. And then that's going to pretty much do it for the airbrush portion of this model. And we can move on to the actual painting. There's not going to be a whole lot of painting to do once we do the, the face and the flesh. But as you guys know, that does take up a significant portion of the brush painting, at least how I handle it. So... Right, and then we've got uh, we've got some non-metallic stuff to do. We'll probably do uh, like I was saying, blue is the offset color, so the model will be mostly that this kind of bone white and blue. Should look, should look pretty cool. Also, have to decide what color hair is going to be, uh, so. You know, her, her hair is white, you know, in most of the artwork, white, whitish gray, so I'm probably going to stick with that. All right, so last color to go down, this Snow White, and I'm just going to do, just going to do... Fine work. Whoa. Maybe not so fine work <laughs> on the model. Transitions look pretty cool. Okay. So she kind of has this dress and a hood. They're not necessarily interconnected but they are
Okay, cool. All right. Clean her out. Airbrush stuff is done. And we're going to get to the painting. So coming up next, face and face and, face and flesh. And I'm going to do... Uh, I, I'm probably not going to use any washes on this flesh of the model. I'm going to have to see how the how the color takes. Uh, this is kind of a this is kind of a, a, a flexible resin that they're using. You know, it's a rest. I don't want to call it rustic because it's definitely not as poor as the rustic stuff that you will find in uh, you know some of the other lines. It's actually pretty pretty high quality. This is more closely related to uh, a standard resin. Come on. Just cleaning out the uh, airbrush here. I do not like leaving huge chunks in the airbrush when I put it away because it's just going to cause major problems later. So if I can take care of it now while the last layer is drying on that model, I will. So here we go. There we go. Okay. Looking pretty good. All right. Let's shut this down. Oh. And I'm going to have to get some more rinse water. I will be right back again. Sorry for the delay. Yeah, I need a new rinse water. That's not too bad, actually. Well, change it. So here we are. Rinse water's back. Let's grab a cookie. Cookie's the important part. Cookie's always the important part. Um, a little bit of water. All right. Let's paint it. Um, get my brushes. No, that's it. No brushes. To... A couple brushes to mix paint. That's what you do with your old brushes. This is what I do with my old brushes. Is I use them to. Uh, to mix up colors, to mix water with the paint. All right. So let's start with eyes, black and white. White glaze. a lot of white here. That does remind me I do need to go back and restock my white. It's okay. It's okay. Alright. That's not the white that I want. Right. Those are not the white they were looking for. There we go. Okay. Got a white, got a black. Let's go. So tonight's topic is um, uh, Hell Dorado. It's uh, there's not a whole lot to discuss here because I talk about Hell Dorado a lot on this channel. 
Um, the only thing I really wanted to bring up tonight with Hell Dorado is the fact that I still really, really enjoy Hell Dorado. And it still is a it's still a mystery to me as to why Hell Dorado just does not get the kind of play that it deserves. I really don't think it does. I think it's um, you know, with all the, the new fantasy skirmish games that are out, obviously Age of Sigmar uh, kind of uh, turning off some people, reigniting in other people, this idea of playing in, you know, this uh, fantasy wargaming uh, skirmish size or otherwise. Uh, and for me, it's like, well, you know, I tried uh, Wrath of Kings, and I st actually still need to give that game a little more time before I feel like I'm I'm at peace with, with where it is and with where my opinion of it is. Uh, but, you know, Wrath of Kings and Hordes and um, some of the other, uh, I guess, fantasy-based. And I know Hordes isn't quite a fantasy-based skirmish game, but you know what I mean. It still has monsters and that kind of stuff. Um, within that genre... I looked, and when when Hell Dorado, when they announced that Anima was kind of being discontinued, and that made me super sad, um, and that put Hell Dorado kind of in people in doubt. Uh, it, it, it cast some some doubt over Hell Dorado with uh, with some of its fans, myself included. Um. I started to look around and and I wanted to see what else I could find in terms of a fantasy war game. And frankly, I still haven't found one that I enjoy as much as Hell Dorado. You know, I I didn't think Wrath of Kings would be up to the bill because it's just Wrath of Kings is is a more streamlined game. Wrath of Kings does what it does really well, which is, you know, it gets you, it gets you that type of uh, hordes level uh, model count game, and scales up and down pretty well in terms of going from a skirmish game to a full blown war game, and actually does that part really well, and it manages time. So, what I'm saying is, Wrath of Kings has plenty of stuff going for it. But in terms of that, and I'm going to call Hell Dorado a one-hour fantasy skirmish experience. If you compare your one-hour fantasy skirmish game experience of Hell Dorado with any of these games out there, Age of Sigmar, um, you know, Dark Age, uh, in, in Wrath of Kings, kind of being the closest in those realms. Uh, I'm sure I'm forgetting a bunch, but those are the three that come to mind right now. They don't stack up. They just don't. They don't stack up to to what Hell Dorado does as a system. As a system, on its own merit, Hell Dorado, to me, is still the best game in that genre. It's still it still gives you that experience within an hour of just an incredible, fun, challenging, tactical war game experience. Not, not to mention thematics. The thematics for Helderado are, are clearly off the chart. The miniatures are superior quality. I'm going to pull this in closer here. They're superior quality miniatures. Um, I mean, what, what more do you want? Hell Dorado is a game that was ahead of its time when it came out. And in a lot of ways is still ahead of its time now. And I, I, I have a lot of frustration with Hell Dorado. I, I still carry a lot of frustration with that game because I really believe in my heart of hearts that that is just such a better game than so many of these other games out there 
that are still around, that are that are still being actively supported, that still have, um, you know, company support and community support. It breaks my heart that El Dorado doesn't have that because I, I I firmly believe it deserves it. I firmly believe that that game is so much better than most people dare, you know, would care to understand. And if only we could get a large group of people playing Helderado and another group to notice, hey, a lot of people playing Helderado. I heard good things about that game. I should play it. Um, I think that would be a great thing. Now, the cool thing about one of the other cool things I really love about Helderado. Um, is that it? Uh, it's a Ninja Division game, so you can, you know, you can use miniatures from the other Cipher line or from the Soda Pop line, and you can kind of intermix and intermingle between those lines. But what's cool is when we when we play the, you know, we played held a, last night. I played a game of uh, a Tactical Tuesday. Played a game of El Dorado, and I played a game of uh, Relic Knights. And each game was under an hour in length. It was great. We had plenty of time to do other stuff, to shop, to just kind of enjoy our company there, eat dinner, that kind of thing. So that was fantastic. The eyes on this Twilight Knight are teeny, teeny tiny. I'm going to have to close that one off like that. There you go. So, you see the big boxes I painted there for the eyes. And you can just barely make them out. All right. I need a... Just a little more clarity in the the right eye. It just I wish, I wish more people would pick up and play Eldorado. It is such a great game. And I'm glad that uh, you know locally uh, some of the guys have kind of are have taken it upon themselves to try to revive the game. It is that good. In my opinion, it is worth it is worth trying to bring back. And and this is the guy that had considered the, you know, bringing Malifaux 1.5 back and playing that. That was how hardcore I was about Malifaux 1.5. Uh, but yeah. And actually, I'll talk about that in a little bit too. My thoughts on Malifaux how many years later um, you know, Malifaux being my my famous ex girlfriend at this point, <laughs> so oh, let's get some of the skin going, and uh, yeah, then we'll we'll talk a little bit more. But yeah, and it, it is kind of crazy. El Dorado um, is such a slick game. It has so many. It, it still has a number of lessons for modern day miniature game designers to understand how slick these mechanics are and how you can get how you can have a tremendous amount of strategic and tactical depth in a game um, that moves as quickly and as is as brutal as Hell Dorado is. It's just such a beautiful beautiful system. Uh, and uh, so this channel loves to kind of shed light on the game. And I am I am sincerely hoping, sincerely hoping that that game can see a little bit more daylight. Uh, you know, in the short term. It's our great, it's a fantastic evening when I'm playing uh, Relic Knight's and Hell Dorado in the same evening. 
because the games are the both games are very different. They satisfy very different um, thematics for me, and they're each. Each of those games are fantastic skirmish systems that do that do things a number of things differently, um, but I think they do them well. They do them well enough to give you the best bang for your buck. You know the the best the best uh, skirmish game experience that you can have in that time slot. Hell Dorado also is just convenient for your life. I mean, it's a low model count game. It uses, it's played on a 30 by 30 mat, which means you can actually play it on a standard, um, you know, standard folding table, and you only need one table. Most of these other games uh, that you that play on a 3 by 3 or a 4 by 4 or a 4 by 6 will require you to extend the top of your table either by uh, placing either by placing another table up against it that's the way most people do it or you could do like a table topper or you could do like a you know you could do like tablescape tiles to kind of just extend the the depth of your table. Heldorado was fantastic. I, I was bringing Heldorado to board game night because it, it takes up about the same amount of space as a board game. And, you know, you play two players and you, you break out a little bit of terrain and you're, and you're, you know, eight to ten models per side and you're done. You can see I'm working on reducing those raccoon eyes. And then I'm gonna base coat the flesh for the for all the model. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Okay. So this Twilight Knight's pretty sick because she's got uh, she's got big she's got the big thighs. And I like that. She's got uh, she's beefy. You know, she's been through some stuff. I like that. Exposed shoulder? I'll never know. I just don't, I'm not getting a good enough. Is that an exposed shoulder or not an exposed shoulder? It's very hard to say. I'm going to say it is an exposed shoulder. I'm going to paint it that way. Feel free to disagree with me in the comments. Yeah, it goes like this. There you go. Uh, obviously, this is this side is covered up. But yeah, this model has some exposed flesh in different areas.
Okay. Okay. And now paint down in here. And we're going to paint a couple other spots that are supposed to be a flesh color. It kind of has these like hobo gloves. She kind of, I got to figure out how the, how her cloth works. I don't feel that that cheek is a little drafty there. <laughs> uh, let's see, you got a comment from Tiago Rodrigo Sanchez. Buenas noches, todo bien. I, I don't, sorry, I don't, I only speak English, I'm a, I'm a poor, uneducated American, only speaking English, <laughs> I, I, it sounds like something is, uh, you know, good evening, but I don't know, uh, if you do speak English, awesome, uh, either way, thank you for tuning into the show, let me know if you have any questions or anything. I'm actually painting this uh, Twilight Night from Wrath of Kings, but we're actually talking about Hell Dorado tonight, and how how I'm I'm just accusing everybody of missing the bus on that game. It really is that good of a game, in my opinion. In my opinion, I you know take that for what it's worth. Okay, so pretty good, right? Let's see if I can actually. All right, I'll let that dry for a minute. I'm going to add some basic skin tone to that color, start to highlight it up. There's a little too much basic skin tone. We'll make it work. All right? Got him. It's got to work. We'll make it work. All right, so this color, this kind of mix of uh, basic skin tone and deep skin tone is really going to be the base coat. So let's get going on that. 
uh, bring you over here. Come with me. I'm going to drag this model closer to me. So this is going to be most of the skin color of the model. And this is going to be a big highlight. Okay, so most of the model will be this. I should say most of the flesh. And here, obviously, whoa, but yeah, majority of the booby top. Gotta decide what color uh, marble I'm gonna do. I'm probably gonna do a green marble, like a black and green marble. I think that would look cool. And then for her hair, I think I'm gonna do like a glacier blue. Like I'll probably base cut the hair azure. And then highlight up with uh, glacier blue and then uh, white at the very tip. So she has kind of bluish white hair. It'll contrast nicely with this kind of warmer white that I've got going here. And it should also look pretty cool with the, uh, with the blue accent color of the model. Maybe I should go ahead and wash. It's not quite taking the skin tones the way I want. So maybe I will. Maybe. Just give it a little more unifying wash color. Funny thing about washes is sometimes, depending on you do them, the skin looks phenomenal with the skin wash, and sometimes looks terrible with the skin wash. I have a feeling this model will look really nice with the skin wash. So I'm going to do skin wash. Uh, I'm going to use actually the uh, sepia tone from Citadel. It's one of my go-to uh, flesh wash colors. And I'm pretty sure it's going to look fantastic. If not, it's okay. It's a painting. You can always fix it. pretty good. Twilight Nights uh,
her eyes are a little bit are still a little bit uh, sullen looking. It's not the end of the world though. No, maybe I won't need a Let's try another layer. Maybe I will not need a wash. Prefer not to use one, but if the skin color isn't blending well enough, then I, I will be forced to. I don't know. I think we're okay without it. I think we have the level of subtle that we want. I'm pretty good. And hear my cat crying out there. Poor kitty. Okay. Let's do uh, a little more basic skin tone. And then I'll do, uh, we're gonna wash the uh, non-metallic steel. Actually, before we even wash the non-metallic steel, I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna paint the hilt of the sword yellow ochre. And then we'll do a bunch of washes at once. And we can work on hair while the washes are drying. Make sense? Cool. And I've got to... Uh, get to mount the model. Okay, so now this is a lot more basic skin tone into our original mix. So I'm introducing this highlight. And this is going to act more like a true highlight in that the goal isn't to get all of the model. The goal is actually just to just to get the tops where the light's going to be shining down. Still Okay
kind of feather out the edges here. So it's kind of a softer transition there. I understand that the model looks pretty washed out on camera because of the how light the gray primer is and the uh, white coat, but it's what I got, folks. Okay. Yeah, I'm not gonna decide it. I'm not gonna wash the skin. Oh shoot. However, I did screw up there. That is, she is supposed to have flesh up here as well. That thing is cut really high. So her thigh, the very top of her thigh is also visible up here. So I can do that. It looks okay. I'm gonna let it dry a little bit. Luckily, it's in a patch of shade, so I don't have to highlight it up too much. It looks okay, though. Let's let that dry a bit. <clears throat> and let's do the last uh, the last skin highlight, which is just pure basic skin tone. And let's uh, thin that. It's just it's almost just this tiny little dot of it. Actually, it's not just almost. It literally is a tiny little dot. Because it's only going to show up on the top highlight. Skin's looking pretty good. I probably will use this bottle for El Dorado and stuff too. So this last layer is going on, not like just a glaze wood, just a very, very light application. And you just let it build a couple layers. There we go. 
Looks pretty good otherwise, though. Getting this thigh right is pretty important for the miniature. Okay, cool. So there she goes. Let's uh, put her on. A little handy dandy handle. There she goes. All right. So now, uh, oh, I gotta paint the hilt yellow ochre. So let's get that going. No. Yellow ochre. Actually, I'm wondering, maybe, how about instead, well, no, let's just do yellow ochre, it's fine. It's normally, the formula, the cheap formula is yellow ochre, sepia wash, then, uh, then overbrush uh, yellow ochre back on top of that, and then highlight with um, Iraqi sand. That's normally how I do this. Uh, I was thinking I could do it a little more old school style. And start off with uh, with a brown. Let that dry, and then do uh, a yellow ochre overbrush on that. But this this is actually this actually blends the colors a little bit better to do it this way. Plus, it's um, far easier to repeat. It's just one of those known formulas. You know, when you when you painted a lot of models and you run across the same color dozens if not hundreds of times you derive different ways to get at that desired color and uh, sometimes those ways are designed to save you time or sometimes they're designed to increase the quality of your paint job uh, in the case of this yellow ochre slash you know non-metallic this is definitely a time saver but you could also argue that it it does, uh, you know, if you do it right, it does actually look better than trying to paint gold on this size of a model. Let's paint a little belt buckle in there. Okay. So while that's drying, we're going to break out a different kind of wash. Um, actually, what I want to do is uh, not quite a wash. I want to do a, a glaze. Uh, and I'm going to use uh, I'm going to use black ink and uh, black ink and glaze medium and some water. And I'm going to use a glaze over the metallic areas of the model. Okay, so. Oh shoot, this, this glaze stuff kind of gunked up a little bit, huh? Okay. You gotta be careful when that does that. Okay. So, so I'm gonna do four drops of glaze, four drops of water, and like two, one and a half drops of uh, black ink. Okay, and that's going to make a a really neat, you know, potent yet yet still transparent black tint. Uh, it's a black gloss tint that you can actually move around the miniature. 
Uh, the glaze mix is what gives you uh, that transparency and it reduces your, it, it actually extends your dry time so that you do have, uh, you know, a bit longer working time with the model. So let's mix that up. So this is a, this is a really weird concoction here. It's a black ink glaze. You wouldn't normally mix an ink with a glaze because they, they're doing two opposite things. An ink is giving you a significant amount of color, uh, like a strong, really strong uh, thing of color, while the, the glaze is really letting it be translucent. So watch as I apply this to the, to the blade here. what it's doing. See that? You see what it did there? Let's do it here. Got it? So pretty cool. Um, so it's giving me color but I'm not really losing much in terms of transparency. It's getting a, a blacker tinge on stuff. So there's a black tinge there. This armor cup will be black also. And you can apply the glaze multiple times to get you the exact color you want. So I believe that's a steel plate. I don't know if this is. I'm going to say this is. So I'm going to paint it thusly. Right? Um, this looks like this is cloth dragged over the shoulder here so I'm gonna leave that alone but then you have armor plates here and you can already see how I can how I will be able to turn that into uh, non-metallic metal I don't know what this is. This just kind of looks puffy. What is that? Yeah, that's not armor. This is armor, though, in the hand. That's easy. And you can go even go like and carry the glaze over to darker areas. Like if you wanted to do something like that on the blade. So it allows for some really cool transition. This is kind of cool. There are these like little, the knee pads are these little, almost looks like arrows, like a D-pad. Now let's do the, uh, the boots. Whoa, hold on. Whoa. Some thread I got on there. Mm. 
when you're working with glazes this thin, make sure that you dab off all the extra water that you can. You see how that's just taken my gray from the from the zenithal prime in the base coat and giving it really good lighting and definition. It's giving the model really good depth. Okay. That's actually a little bit of flesh back there that I missed. So I'm gonna let me let me just paint that paint that up real quick. It's not gonna take much. Let's get a little base coat back there. And I need a little more paint. So. But yeah, this is normally the time I'm going to bed, folks. I'll press on a little bit just so we can see a little more of this model. Um, and unfortunately, we are not finishing our model tonight. We just have a, we just ended up with a shorter broadcast because of the, the late start and all. But I do appreciate you guys uh, continuing to, to tune in when you can and, um, uh, you know, pop it in and say hi. And, you know, that, that that always means a lot to me to know that, hey, I'm not just talking to myself into the ether of the Internet, that there are a couple people out there that are tuning in and listening to me ramble while we paint. Getting a nice cheek shot there. Oh, shoot. Sometimes the model, when you've thinned the paint so much, it doesn't matter how much of the excess moisture you rem remove, it's just going to want to puddle and run. You got to be careful about that kind of stuff. Okay. What do you think? Looking pretty good, huh? Okay. Let's work on hair, just so we can, uh, oh, before we work on hair, though, let's do our quick sepia wash over the gold, or the burnished gold, um, the burnished gold hilt. You can see that that immediately gives it a nice burnished look. And it actually dries down pretty well, too. And while that's drying down, we're going to work on the hair. Okay. It's looking pretty good, man. It's looking pretty sharp. I might do a... Oh, oh wait. Did I? Hold on. That's right. No, I got that right. Okay. Sometimes it, the folds and stuff on a, a model are ambiguous, and so you're wondering, like, is that plate? Did I get that right? Did I not get that right? Uh, anyway, let's work on here. All right, so like I said, we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do azure as one of the colors. Uh, oh man, I'm I'm half tempted to do something crazy like start with electric blue and work my way up. It would give the model some crazy 
highlight, but it's, it's a little too wild, so I'm going to go with Azure as the... Actually, I don't even need to go with Azure as the base. I could go with... Uh, uh, I could go, like, way dark, like something like that as the base. That's not bad. It might be a little too blue. Well, it's a little too anime. Screw it. Azure it is. <laughs> Damn it, Octave. Make up your mind. Okay. Yeah, we're going to get Azure as the base. Then we're going to go up to Glacier Blue. And then a little bit of white. This is already... I mean, I'm, I'm not... I'm not terribly far along in this model. This model is already a lot of fun. Already. Now, I like Azure because for a color this light, it actually covers pretty well. And it's, it's much more versatile than you might give it credit for when you first see it. Uh, you can use Azure for warm whites. You can use it for grays you can use it for ice you can use it for jeans if you ever do blue jeans on a model which i've done before uh, this is one of the colors that i would recommend always trying to keep around because you never know you i, I always end up using it somewhere on a model i mean i could even make a glaze of it and glaze the sword in certain parts to give the sword a little more, a little more cool factor. Speaking of which, I'm having an issue here. I need to clean that up off the sword just a little bit. There we go. There we go. Okay. And you can see the, let's see, Azure going down. Okay. Whoa. Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay. So the Azure drawing of the hair move on to um, the blue. Okay. There's not gonna be a lot of blue on this miniature. Well, I have two there's I don't want to do the main cloak as blue. I kinda want it to, to keep it that uh, Templar white. Because I don't really want it to I, I don't want it to contrast with the Azure I just put down. Um so, I'm going to do blue on the sleeves. I'm going to do blue on the sleeves, and I'm going to do it here on the, uh, above the, above the, the boots there. Okay, so, uh, you have to just pick the undercoat blue, which is going to be this uh, Mediterranean blue. Another night. Kind of a wispy blue. And then I could even use Azure as the base color to this, if I so choose. It's actually really nice blue. So tonight's just all business, man. Paint it and talked about. I guess for you guys that are going to tune in now or later or whatever, I might as well ask you what you guys think. Um, 
Do you have a game that you believe that, you know, that might be on the outs or isn't played in your area or, you know, maybe it got discontinued? Do you guys have a game that you feel strongly enough about that you feel that it should actually see a comeback and, you know, should come back into, you know, into play with people? What's that game and, and what would you be willing to do to get it back in front of people? For me, it's going to be this game. And for what I would do to get it back in front of people, I don't know. I mean, I've done a lot to kind of push this game, uh, a lot in the past. Uh, but I, I think I'd be willing to do it again, you know, if I, if I felt there was another shot at it, I would, uh, you know, I would shoot more Helderado videos. I want to do some Helderado, uh, battle reports. Um, and I'd run some open, like organized play locally if I felt there was a, a chance at it. But there may not be. Poor Eldorado. I love Eldorado so much. It really does deserve a better share than it's gotten so far. I don't like in this blue. She has this, that studded garter too. I have to decide what to do there. If I'm going to do brown, do it brown or blue. I'll probably do brown just to introduce a third color here. Oh, I see what's going on. So there's that's kind of a plate that goes all the way across, huh? And that's also a bit of armor there. Not too bad. Okay, let's break out that uh, this uh, glaze again and add another layer. I'm actually going to use it back here so that we know that is also part of the armor. Use it there. There we go. Okay, so now... Uh, I need to I need to add a little more shade to the glaze by doing another layer of it. But I'm gonna kind of hide it in the shadow. If that makes sense to you guys, you know, just kind of build that layer. away from the light. So now you're starting to see where I'm going with the, the shadow. I'll put it on the underside of the boobage, the boob plate. There we go. Right here, the 
bottom part of that. It's already on that blade there. All right. Pretty cool so far. Let's uh, highlight our burnished gold. And then we're going to give uh, kind of need to do a white highlight on the, just a very fine uh, line highlight on the plate. I'm wondering if I should do a shade coat on this, um, on the cloak. I think I can do one. I would just have to really, really, really water it down. But I think it would work. I think I can do that. Let's do that, in fact. Uh, so, but before we do that, I want to do, uh, I'm going to do a little bit of brown. Yeah, make a little belt. Paint the, the belt in. Because there's, there's just a couple of little straps on the miniature. She's looking pretty good, though. Looking pretty good. Yeah, she's coming along just fine. So there's one strap, there's another strap kind of going around her back here. So right there, the strap, and then there's this strap here across the arm. There we go. Okay, looking pretty good. You know, still, oh. There we go. What do you think? Looking pretty good, huh? Not too bad. Not too bad. Not too bad. Okay. Uh, now let's do. Let's make a, a a really thin wash. I'm gonna thin down this uh, seraphim sepia, really thin, and run it over the cloak with the intent of uh, just getting a le just the slightest amount of shadow onto the cloak. I don't, what I don't want to do is I don't want to, you know, tint the cloak too much. So I'm going to put a little bit of this wash here and add some water to it. Just so that I can get because it's really, the, the shading is just way subtle now compared to where I need it to be. I just need, I just need a little bit of shadow in certain parts. There we go. Look at that. Yeah, that's looking great. 
That is exactly what I was hoping for. Right? And I can move it. That's what I like about, about this. There we go. So it doesn't look like I've just completely smothered it in wash. I'm actually carefully wash the cloak and then just let the let the product let the the uh, shade react where it's going to shade that looks great And then when this dries, it really, you really shouldn't see too much of it. Let's see. Okay. Uh, and now we're going to go with this glacier blue. Highlight the hair. Yeah, she's she's looking pretty good. She's looking pretty good. In fact, before I do that, I'm gonna do a little highlight of Azure over the or the other blue. So Azure over the Mediterranean blue. Which isn't the most precise highlight, it's just, it will just give us a little bit of lighting on it. Looks okay. Okay. And now, highlight the light. There we go. See, it's like really, really. Should probably line this up so you guys can see. That's her. On camera, it looks like she just has raccoon eyes. She's looking pretty cool. Okay, so now, uh, what I want to do is just the finest, and I mean the finest little highlight of white. With the armor. And I'm only going to, I mean, I have to be very selective about where, where this white highlight goes. But we're just talking basically hard ridges of the armor. Oh, wow. Oops. There we go.
Chill. What do you think? Okay. It's looking pretty good. Okay. So, there you have it. There's That's her for tonight. Uh, let's back up so you can actually see it. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, there's obviously still a little bit more to paint on her, but she's looking pretty good. That's her. Um, really, the main thing left to do is a couple things. I got to do the... Uh, some of the gems in her uh, on the knee pads and uh, looks like there's a gem in the sword of the hilt and then the rest of this is just uh, doing the basing and uh, she's good to go but she's looking she's looking pretty good um, probably only about another 30 minutes left of painting to this model uh, had I started on time tonight we would have finished it start to finish but uh, I don't know she's off. I think she's she was looking pretty good uh, but yeah, anyway, uh, we're going to call it there. I want to thank you guys for watching. Um, once again, I don't know. I think the future of this show, we might move to 9.30 start time or maybe even 10 o'clock start time. But yeah, it's just, it's getting to be a lot uh, to try to get uh, my son in bed by nine. Uh, so with that in mind, I think we're going to, we're going to call it for now. want to thank you guys for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.